Hello there kitties, I'm Kari, the vacuum tube witch. And this time I'll be talking about a certain feature in uh, guitar amplifiers that uh, you might get uh, you might get something wrong when uh, designing an amp. I will tell you what it is and uh, I will show you my way of doing things, the, the Caritec way of uh, designing the power supply in a uh, guitar amp. So let's get to the bench and take a look at a few circuit diagrams in the datasheet. So we are now at the bench. Um, maybe let's get a better view on on the camera. What's that cat doing? So uh, what I'm first gonna show you is the is the Mesa Boogie dual rectifier power supply uh, schematic. From uh, from ninety three, and uh, the the part that is uh, interesting in it uh, is um, the switchable uh, rectifier circuit. You can select between uh, the semiconductor diodes or the vacuum tubes. Those tubes are five U four G or 5C for S uh, for the Russian or Soviet tubes. And uh, the problem with those tubes uh, and the circuit uh, they work in is the input capacitance of, uh, of the filter. We've got uh, two 220 microfarad capacitors uh, stacked on top of each other, so they are virtually connected in series, having their capacitance, so the whole branch would be 110 microfarad for two tubes uh, connected in parallel, whereas if we take a look at the 5U4G datasheet, this one is from Brimer, the recommended uh, capacitor is 32 microfarad uh, maximum, that is uh, for a single tube, so uh, we can assume that uh, it would be 64 microfarad um, for two tubes uh, connected in parallel, which is still half of uh, the Mesa Boogie or Messy Booger, like I call it, 110. And since those tubes are indirectly heated, the, the high load. Uh, the low impedance load uh, posed by uh, the discharge uh, capacitor during uh, the switch on uh, period will uh, will lead to very fast uh, very fast degradation of uh, of the cathode shortening the tube's uh, lifespan and uh, the indirectly heated uh, tubes like uh, GZ34 or EZ80, EZ81, they generally have uh, have uh, stronger um, cathodes uh, that, that are not as prone to to degradation under under heavy loads. But uh, they still have uh, limited uh, input capacitance, and uh, that's what takes us to my solution uh, that I will uh, implement in the in the dirty dozen amp. 
with the EZ80 tube for push-pull EL84 amplifier. I will tell you about uh, how I'm doing this. Generally, I am not using a uh, center-tapped uh, maze transformer. I'm using something uh, that I, I I call it hybrid four bridge rectifier. <laughs> uh, for those who are not electro boom fans, that would be hybrid hybrid uh, full wave bridge rectifier or hybrid bridge rectifier. And generally. It's uh, a little bit like the typical full bridge rectifier, but uh, on the positive side, we just change the semiconductor diodes to a vacuum tube, which has uh, anodes, uh, separate anodes, and a common cathode. And this goes to the filter cap. And uh, this is for the indirectly heated uh, vacuum tube like uh, EZ80. I can uh, heat it from the 6.3 volts um, DC. It has uh, a good uh, few hundred uh, volts, something like 400 maybe. I, uh, I don't remember the data sheet, but uh, it can withstand um, something like 400 uh, between the cathode and the heater and uh, the input capacitor consideration uh, still applies. It's, uh, it's not as bad as for the directly heated tubes but, uh, but uh, it is still limited and this brings us to my idea for the switchable rectifier Right uh, here, this is the circuit that I'm gonna implement in the Dirty Dozen. It has the full bridge rectifier, the, the classic semiconductor value, and it also has the vacuum tube. It has a switch that uh, allows us to change uh, between the vacuum tube and uh, the semiconductor because uh, in guitar amplifiers, in, uh, in push-pull amplifiers that uh, are class uh, A, B or B, there is uh, an uh, effect uh, on, uh, on the tone named uh, sagging. This is basically compression caused by uh, the voltage drop on the power supply. This uh, this is the case for high impedance um, power supplies uh, such as uh, vacuum tube power supplies because uh, the tube itself as well as the resistance uh, of um, the main transformers secondary will be quite a significant uh, it's quite a significant resistance and uh, a few tens of volts uh, will be dropping there, limiting the, the B plus uh, supply, both for the preamp and the power amp. And uh, if we play the amp uh, at high power, it, uh, it will uh, start uh, getting naturally limited, introducing uh, some uh, compression to the sound. With uh, semiconductor rectifier, this is uh, not really much the case. It's only the windings uh, impedance that uh, will limit it, then will limit the, the voltage. And uh, my idea here is to use uh, a larger filter cap for the semiconductor supply and a limited uh, capacitance for the tube supply. And what's uh, more interesting in it is this diode 
between the two supplies. First of all, uh, it allows us to bleed off both capacitors through the 100 kilo ohm resistor as the, as the amp is switched off. And uh, after some time, uh, the, the voltage on the capacitors uh, will bleed off, making it safe to work on the amplifier. And also, then the diode will be reverse biased uh, as the amplifier is being switched on. So, uh, right after turning the amp on, this rectifier will uh, start uh, working uh, instantaneously, charging the capacitor, while the tube is still heating up, and it takes a lot of time to heat up because it is indirectly heated, and uh, indirectly heated tubes um, heat up uh, for a few good uh, tens of seconds contrary to directly heated tubes like 5U4GB that uh, will start uh, being operational in uh, just a few seconds so uh, there's this natural uh, standby uh, effect uh, with uh, indirectly heated tubes. And uh, this also means that uh, soon after switching the amplifier on, we get uh, this capacitor charged, but this capacitor will not be charged until the tube uh, gets hot and starts conducting and charging the capacitor. And as the voltage uh, rises on, uh, on the capacitor, it will still be lower than the voltage uh, on uh, the semiconductor rectifier capacitor, which means that this diode will be reverse biased and will not conduct uh, at all. It will not... Uh, conduct uh, any voltage uh, from here, because uh, here the voltage will be higher than here for as long as uh, the tube is being heated up. If, uh, even if there is no, no current draw from uh, this branch, then the voltage on uh, this capacitor will be lower due to the resistance uh, of the tube itself and the voltage drop um, between the plate and the cathode. So there is no risk of um, the tube charging both uh, 47 and 100 microfarad capacitors it will charge only the 47 microfarad. And then we can change over between the tube rectifier or the semiconductor rectifier, with this being the harder power supply line than the stiffer power supply line that uh, doesn't uh, doesn't uh, change the voltage uh, with uh, with uh, current uh, drawn from the power supply, and this is the softer line that uh, will uh, introduce some uh, sagging if we draw more current from it. And that would be for the short explanation on uh, the hybrid uh, full bridge rectifier that uh, I'm going to use in my amps. 
keep up the good work. And by the way, uh, if you want to use um, my design, feel free to do that, but mention me from time to time, okay? <laughs> See you.